Hey, good morning to you. I'm Michael Green. Good morning. It's me. I'm on the road upside down. <clears throat> okay, so here's what we got going on. Boom. Uh, great to have you on the show this morning. Lots of folks piled on. Is pile a word? It is if you live in the South. Uh, so I best dust off my glasses so I can see when I'm painting uh, my readers here. Uh, getting the magnifying number just right. Um, ah, look at that. Okay, so hey, good morning, Denise. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, ink, the ink inspired one and only Jason from Disney. He's greeting us from Disney. Oh boy, that tickles. <laughs> Um, Mickey Mouse. Hey, uh, welcome to the show. Denise Albright, good morning. Great to have you. It's still uh, not even morning out there in California. Beverly Schmidt, good morning. Uh, good morning from rainy Indiana, Jennifer Yen says. Woohoo. I, I, we're supposed to get some, and I hope so. Got house guests coming in today. And, uh, you know, I, I want to visit with them and I want to walk around the town just a little bit, but I'm telling you what, I want to see some uh, rain too. It has been hot here. And what's the old Johnny Carson line? How hot has it been? No, what's that old joke? There's there's probably one. Um, ah, I saw a robin getting a worm out of the ground, and it was using a potholder. That's how hot it was. <laughs> All right, Laura Logan, uh, morning to you. Miss Carla says, you're back. I can't wait to hear Buffalo story. Well, I've got some. I don't tell you too many. Skip Rule 43 is on the show this morning. Great to have you here. Man, I have uh, been to New York, had a major dental crash, Skip, and so I still owe you another email, I think. Uh, James O. Wade Jr., uh, good morning to you, sir. June Jones, Gene Anthalzer, Laura Logan, I think uh, you're muffled. Oh, yeah, I am muffled. Sorry. You know what? It's been so long since I've done the show. Hold on. Thank you. That's my fault. Hold on one second here. I bet I can change my audio. Let's see if that does it. Not yet, huh? No. All right, hold on. Hold on. I'm not done yet. I can make this work. It should have popped in here. I've got a little microphone I'm resetting here today. Hold on one second. Kaboom. Uh, let's see if it comes up. How weird is that, huh? Uh, yeah, boom, boom, boom. Audio USB. Let's see if it switches in here. But Job, I think he's done it. <laughs> okay. I think this cable has seen its better day. So came in from traveling and I use this cable to download audio when I'm on the road. And I don't think it connects correctly to my desk microphone. So boop. All right, there we go. I'm sorry. Hey, thank you for that. Uh, Laura, thank you for jumping on that right away. Audio's breaking up. Breaking up is hard to do. 
<laughs> so I'll start again. Hello, hello, hello to all you people. Uh, uh, sketching architecture, he says, at Disney World. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, boy, that tickles. All right. Um, uh, you're fine now. Thanks, Laura. Yep, I knew that was coming. Okay, so appreciate it out, out there. Let's do this. Uh, got a little bit of time with you this morning. And uh, we're out. Let's see. Got a couple notes where I'm at the B count. What was New York like? It was, uh, you know, it wasn't terribly busy. Uh, which blew my mind a little bit. I mean, were we in traffic? Yes, but not as bad as traffic driving through Maryland. You poor people. You know, it made me think about praying for the, the folks uh, uh, suffering through the bridge loss there and all that. And uh, just what a fortunate thing that a lot of calls did go out and, and stop traffic. Uh, but, um, man, the we had to, we were pulled around the way we had to go in, so we just sent traffic for a long time. Uh, never thought I'd get a phone call in uh, late in the night. Started with a text. Someone said, "Hey, would you mind going on a road trip? I need to take Buffalo to New York." <laughs> so I jumped on my phone, bada, 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 and I responded back and said, um, uh, "You bet." Want to talk tonight or in the morning? He goes, oh, man, it's too late tonight. I just wanted to put this on your radar. And I said, all right, call in the morning. So, man, sure enough, uh, uh, early morning, I get a phone call. And Zan says, uh, yeah, I've got this opportunity to take the buffalo. And I was trying to figure out how to do it. And I needed someone who could help me tie the buffalo on and lift the buffalo and think creatively and maybe shoot some video. And I went, uh, it's you. Would you go? And so uh, I said, Yes. We took off. Uh, it took us a while, uh, and and this was like we had five days to four days to put this together. Think, where should we go? What should we do? And then some of you saw some of the videos. I got a little um, recap that I just did of some of the places we stopped. It wasn't until we were really uh, thirty minutes out of from where I live, thirty forty five minutes out from where I live. We we went through the town of Little Matthews Town. It's a great little town, coffee shop, hardware, all that. Just a fabulous town. We w we went through there, and it wasn't until we broke through that a little bit that we realized we we were going to be a spectacle. You know, you don't think about it, and the the reality thinking was neither of us wanted to cover it. And Carol said, "What if it? What if it's covered and the tarp?" really affects the buffalo's hair. I mean, this is a mounted buffalo that's been mounted for probably over 25 years. And he was a massive uh, bull buffalo, probably weighed about 2,500 pounds. His, he's five and a half feet at, at the hump. So I'm six five. So he's right here on me. I mean, so I can't really see over this guy. It's crazy. Um, see over him just a little bit, but he's, he's massive, massive. The head on the thing is this big around. And so if you see me holding up my hands here, and I'm a, I'm not a small person. I told that to my dentist this week. I said, you know, for a big man, I have a low pain threshold because you have a little mercy on me. And so we uh, we didn't know what the weight was because it was on a pad. It's, I mean, complete full-legged buffalo on a kind of a, a, a pad that has a little bit of concrete there to hold it down. And so we were afraid. I said, it can't weigh more than a refrigerator, so let's just get four guys and we'll, we'll hoist it up in there. <clears throat> And so we did, and then I strapped it in, and it wasn't until we drove through the little town, and I said, I might as well get a shot of you coming up the street, down the street, past the hardware, past our friend's coffee shop. I have a friend who owns a coffee shop there. And uh, and I, it was a hot day, and so I'm running around the streets getting set up, and we're calling back going, drive now. And so it wasn't until I realized people were popping out their iPhones that we really had something that would be fun. And that made us think differently about even some of the outline that we'd plan. You know, here's the thing about art. You make a plan and you make it in your style and what you think will happen. And then you'd be willing to be flexible with that plan if you're going to, what's the word when you think like an artist? Adapt. If you're going to adapt, you've got to be flexible. You know, what's what's my, my old quote on my music stand for years at the church in Florida where I led music was this. Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not break. So you have to remain flexible when you're in a process that you don't know what's going to happen. And so we decided just to go, look, could the, could the um, 
old fur and buffalo hide retain its its uh, toughness of hair at we're not going to drive over 60 we're an electric ford truck that was part of the deal too to see if we could do it in electric truck <laughs> never again will do that but it made it fun to go by the ford place one day and and whatever you do to a truck electrify them up fuel up uh, plug it in and the guys all came out and they had their cell phones out and that started a whole conversation of talking and we're still sending them some stuff today but part of it was um, it had to be in New York City Saturday at noon so they could set up and rehearse for a Sunday morning news show which got jumbled all around some of you missed it they did something they hadn't done in the last 10 times this guy's done a production there they ran out of news stories and they went to him early so the whole crew comes out and they go crazy, and uh, there's a bunch of things there. And uh, uh, Chip Ward, the guy who puts Chip Wade, the guy who puts this together, is just really top personality guy. His uh, wife and two, three children were there. Spectacular family, and really fun to meet him, and uh, and knows his stuff. Anyway, they have to work with it then. So we thought, if we leave on Thursday morning, crack a dawn, and we get through Charlotte. And then where could we go? So we're driving through Charlotte and my friend texts a friend and says, Hey, got the Buffalo. I just thought of you. We stopped at this motor speedway, Charlotte NASCAR motor speedway. And I said, and I made that little comment where I said, wouldn't it be something if we could get him on the track? So while I'm shooting the photo to just make a little, wouldn't it be something thing? Seriously. Uh, he texts a friend and we're up the road 20 minutes Maybe a little less than that, but anyway, the point is his phone, his a big screen in this electric vehicle goes, boom, get a message from Dan. Dan sends a note back and says, you want to get that buffalo on the track? And we're going like, I look at him and I go, is this legit? Turn the truck around. And so we turned the truck around and drove back to uh, Concord, North Carolina, Charlotte, where the motor speedway is, Burton Smith, and we pull in there. And he's sitting there waiting on us and says, come down to this gate, come through. We drive through the tunnel. I have video of that. We come out on the track and we come up past pit row and I go, let me out. So I run up pit row and get myself positioned and I go, go down and then take off. And so um, it started from there. We get back in and I start editing the piece because I just can't believe it. And then we think, where else has this buffalo got to go past to make it fun. And so I'm going to show you this video that I'm going to go with some watercolor this morning and say hi to the rest of you. But that's a little bit of the story. It was really, what did I say all the time that I, I, if I ever quoted Bob Ross incorrectly, but I quoted the incorrectness a lot, it would be this. It was never really about the art. It was about the people. Thank you. And so it, it is, it's always about the people, the connection. 97, 98% of the people who ran up to see the thing, who stopped us and blew the horn, even on the interstate, rolled down the window and yelled when we were in traffic and slow enough to move, they, they asked the same question. Is that thing real? That was not a question we were expecting. Uh, uh, what do you mean real? And they would go, well, uh, oh, was it real? He goes, yes. You know, we're so uh, um, uh, we're so used to CG, you know, computer generated information and all the stuff that comes to you and art and AI that we forget that there's real animals out there like this. And one lady said, he said, what is it? And we're in traffic. And she says, she says, it's a moose. And he goes, no, he goes, no, there's another guest. She said, a, a large ram. He goes, uh, a buffalo. And he went, ah, so. Anyway, it's kind of fun. So here's the, here's a little video. I just want to show it to you. My face is going to pop up here in just a second. Then I'm going to drop this video on top of it, and it should roll right here. Sometimes you have to get out of the office, outside in the breeze, shake off the dust, go more places, meet more people, make life an adventure, see more art, learn a bit more history. We did a weekend road trip from North Carolina to New York City. Buffalo Jackson, built to roam. Honor your wild. Okay, so there you go. So that's that's kind of how it came down. A, a short little piece that I threw out there. And you saw where we went. We went from the Capitol, we went from the Washington Monument. 
Uh, that one building with all the steps is the museum in uh, uh, Philly where Rocky ran up the steps. Uh, there's a piece put together with the Rocky theme. Um, that circle is beautiful. And that's a place I've never seen before. So then we started thinking, it's going to take us a long time to get there because we're, we went out of the Virginia, um, up through the Virginia farmlands. Uh, the Ferris wheel was in uh, the National Harbor in Washington, D.C. Uh, the house where you see Zan giving a bag to a couple. He was a school teacher. Uh, they were from, oh goodness, Indiana. And they had just made the trip into see theater. But since he teaches history at a school, he wanted to get some pictures of Teddy Roosevelt's birthplace. And that's right there in New York. And so uh, we went blasting across uh, the Brooklyn, but it was the wrong direction. But I at least got a shot of the Buffalo on the Brooklyn Bridge. There's a shot where I'm hanging out through the sunroof, shooting back across his, his rump. That's not the most beautiful picture I've ever seen, but... Uh, it's probably the only one that exists. Anyway, my point was I acted like I was uh, 17 and I was on an adventure. And um, it it just freshened my life up a little bit. And I worked so hard. I mean, I came home and I was whipped. And then, of course, I, I smashed a crown. Uh, no, not a crown. I uh, a, a tooth that, um, it's a long story. But anyway, I lost a bridge. And so then I spent... Uh, I don't know, seven or nine hours in a dental chair in different times and uh, with lots of needles going through my palate and uh, bone grafts and uh, implants, and those are still coming already. So anyway, it's been a tough time. Hey, a dental thing is something that's plagued me since I was an athlete. I was a tall middle linebacker, um, defensive end, switched to middle linebacker, and I got shorter running backs who would bounce off my shoulder pads and their helmets would hit me in the chin, and it created all this... Uh, problems that I paid for later. I bought, I, I asked told my dentist, my new dentist, which I love. She's a sweet doctor, man. Just sharp. Technology's changed so much. And she said, uh, when did you have these first ones done? And I said, probably 70 something. And she goes, oh my gosh. And I said, well, they've been redone. They took out the silver and they put in a uh, Gouda Percha, which is the rubber from golf balls. And I said, you know, I could choose all the round files. I know it's a 24 that went up in here. And she goes, what do you do? And I said, I paint watercolor roosters and so anyway and i painted her b but i'm taking one back uh, for her so anyway there's enough of that so uh flexibility is a key think of the palm tree that sways in the wind <laughs> jason you have no idea man and those palm trees uh, if you want to read psalms 12 2, the righteous shall flourish like a palm whoa they're mentioned there all right I love it. Thanks for being on today. Let me tell you what I've been doing, and I hope you've been doing some things. I hope in the process of traveling, moving, I carried an art bag with me. I took a, in fact, I took a Buffalo Jackson art bag, a sweet bag. I should probably show it to you. It's just fantastic. But uh, uh, if there's some questions, I'll uh, I'll answer them this morning. And then uh, I've got a little bit of painting to do because I haven't caught up with you in a while. Thank you. Laura says, I'm fine now. No, I'm not yet, but I may be someday. <laughs> I know what you mean, though. Audio. Uh, good morning from Culpepper. Uh, Mickey Hupp, thanks for being on the show. Catherine Brousseau. Uh, Evelyn Davis Morales. Love it, love it. Pat like body. Golly, look at all you folks. Sue Kane from across the river. Bob from up in extremely soggy Minnesota. Chris Whitaker, thanks for being on. Chris, your art has progressed like 15,000 um, uh, points of al al altitude, just so much better. It's it's not. I don't want to say that. It sounds like you weren't good in the first place. You always had this very detailed hand, but now watching you put things together, uh, and and one of the things that gave me time to do uh, in the dental chair, uh, I sketched one time while I was waiting for the Novocaine to make my lips, you know, real briefly. Uh, was um, I I actually went through some Rouge Crew stuff, and uh, you people are impressive. I love it that you're still painting, that you're giving people art. I gave away some art in New York. And you know how those people felt? Like the ones in Charlotte when I'm in restaurants. I gave away one the other night and I walk up and I say, whose who's, who's birthday is it? Whose closest birthday to today? And somebody goes, oh, it's mine. They go, happy birthday. And they go, what? 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 And, and Carol and I are gone. And, or you walk up and you have a little bee that says, uh, or you have a dragonfly that says, you know, maybe there's a little dragonfly that you painted. And maybe it's just simple as pen and ink here. It's something like this. 
And and you're, you're right. I write on there what I always write. You know why you fly? Because you take yourself so lightly. That's one of my favorite things to write on the dragonfly. It just came to me one day. Is that they're just like this? They're like, are they worried? No, they're not worried about anything. And so, um, I uh, I throw that out there like that. And then here's what happens. Um, I say, Who, who's anxious? Who's the most anxious? And everybody points to the same person. Everybody knows. And I'm thinking, don't be anxious. Take yourself lightly. And I hand them the painting. And I, I gave it to a couple in New York, uh, a, a little bee, that said, be on an adventure. They were in their early 60s, probably. And just reached across the table. And the waiter went, look, he already gave me this one. And uh, here's what happened. We're sitting out uh, just finishing up a little cup of coffee out on this bench. And uh, we just crossed the street from our hotel uh, in Midtown. And, and or, yeah, not far from Times Square. And and so, so it really wasn't Midtown. And, and uh, this couple comes walking by and he goes like this. Thank you so much. And I said, no, thank you guys. Where are you traveling from? She, he said, well, I'm from uh, Las Vegas. She said, I'm from. Or he said, I'm from St. Louis, and she was from somewhere else, other part of the world. And I go, oh, I thought you guys were. And he said, nope, we meet here once a year, and uh, we're just old high school friends, and we just go see a play and have dinner together, and then we fly back home. We've been doing it for like 20 years, and we're like, okay, that's a twist. <laughs> I, I, I owe one of you. I said, if you'll send me an email, I'll pay the other one something, too. And I haven't heard from him yet, but that's what you do when you think like an artist, okay? All right. Gene Anthalzer, thanks for being on the show. Yes, uh, I would have been very popular in Buffalo, New York, which reminds me of a story. We've got the Buffalo loaded after the Fox News segment. We're putting it back on the truck and we're thinking, now we got to take this thing home and we have to plot a route that lets us fuel up the truck electrically. So, And, and we don't want to go to the slow little Tesla chargers because it takes them for like an hour and a half to charge up when those big ones uh, charge up at, 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 you know, 40 minutes or less. And so that'll take us on our next little pit stop and where we're going. And, uh, in the process of doing that, and where was I, what was I telling you? Oh yeah. We decided before we went to cross the street and I said, I, I'm not leaving New York because it was a rush trip, but I'm not leaving New York until I get a hot dog on the street. I mean, it's just a rule. You got to eat a hot dog a vendor. So we just crossed the street. I'm looking, I'm walking toward Rockefeller center. Rockefeller, uh, you know, Plaza, where they do the NBC. So I'm at Fox. I'm walking across toward NBC. And uh, there's a little hot dog guy there. And so we ask, is this your spot? He said, been here for six years. This is my spot. I, the licensing, my uncle, my, I mean, it's passed down. So he has this little spot that he does every day. And, and he said, you want a hot dog? And I said, yeah, I'm tired of buffalo wings. And he turned around looking at that truck. And he just went, <laughs> he didn't know what to say. Neither did I. So there's so many funny lines. A lady came up and she said, oh my gosh, I've just come from church. And I said, what church did you go to? And she says, well, I'm Roman Catholic. And I said, we're Roman too. And she went, ah. So it was just the things, the one-liners that came out that made that such a pleasant story. So there you have it, okay? Um, so, um, and uh, Jason says, what did you feel in New York City that inspires your art differently? I think one is just the striking uh, geometric shapes of everything. And I did drive past the Flatiron Building, which I absolutely love. And Jason, I know you've sketched it. It is just phenomenal. I think that big cities that did Flatiron Buildings, and the one in New York is quite sharp on the end. Uh, there's another one in Detroit that's rounded out, I think, some, or is it, I don't remember where it is, but there, there's just some great flat iron buildings. I just love that concept that they're they're this shape, that they say, ah, there's a corner there. Let's just, don't you, when you're with the guy in the corner, I'd love to have my office in a corner. And just like, look at that. And you turn around, you got window, you got window. I'm thinking, this is it. What, the light comes in like this? Um, I love that so much. All right. I'm wasting a whole morning with you here, but listen, thank you for letting me catch up. So the Buffalo trip was fantastic. And here's here's what I want to say to that. To me, it was more than just a trip. It was more than just, it, it wasn't business. It was uh, hanging out with a friend. It was trying to creatively think how we could uh, help him do what he does. And that sells some of these brilliant Buffalo bags. And, you know, you know, I carry this thing. I've carried it for years. This has a little Buffalo on it right there. There's one. Oh, you can see it right there. See? Uh, this is my little Buffalo uh, 
travel wallet, which really I don't even use for anything else except my watercolor paper. And I put it in here, and this is what I carry in restaurants. There's a little QR code in here, and I've made a little tab on that. Boop. So I just pull it out. People say, do you have a business card? And they say, well, we don't, I don't know how to use QR codes. And I go, okay, well, I have this little business card. Look at this one right here. And it's hand-painted, too. And it's just a scrap paper. So don't throw anything away. Well, that's not true. I throw a lot of bad art away. And I paint a lot of bad art. But, uh, yeah, I probably can't get those back in there. But uh, you see where I was headed with it. So in, in there, I carry this. And that's my paper when I still travel at restaurants. This, these three pens that I said I wanted to talk about, and this. So I'll choose where I'm going. And I'll take this and this. Or I'll choose a number, not a number three. And I'll, I'll go this way for uh, a restaurant. Um, and I still have in my pocket my 05 uh, Pentel Intergel needle tip. But it's, uh, it's in this. Uh, remember, I cut the, I cut the uh, spring down in this pen so that the refill would fit in my old pen, my 30-year-old pen. And so I still have that, too. So I, I'm never without pen or paper. And I wanted to talk to you about paper today. Um, and a new painting tin. Okay, so you know I carry this one all the time, but I'm getting ready to go west. That's why I've been painting buffaloes. And so here it is. How do you, I used to start off all of my, I still do. I, I just taught a uh, class on journaling. Um, it wasn't a class. It was a workshop on journaling about two weeks ago. Well, the day I got back from New York before my bridge collapsed, that would have been uh, terrible. Huh? Had it just fallen out right there. Um, I taught it on journaling, and I'm taking a fresh uh, uh, Japanese concertina journal with me when I go to, uh, on the 11th, we're supposed to take off to the Tetons, which I've never seen, and I wanted, I've written a poem about a buffalo, and I want to paint the painting, and I've decided that I want to do it sort of live, I want to do, the, I want to, I've memorized the poem, I was here before John Muir, and I want to do that poem. At the same time that I want to paint this painting, can I do the painting quick enough? Because I only want to do it and ready for this 90 seconds. So the first time I painted this buffalo, it took me about 10 minutes or 15 minutes because I, I decided not to trace it. I don't want to trace buffalo. I want one that I've looked at. So I looked at quite a few. I just went, oh, that way, this way, that way. Then I rode with one for what, five, four days. <laughs> Five days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, got home 4.30 a.m. Monday morning and then unloaded it that afternoon. So I was in close contact with the real buffalo. Um, and so I decided that I would, I wanted it to be in my style. And some of you are saying, wait a minute, is this a guy that doesn't paint four legs? Well, you can't see but three on most of them. So I'm holding to that. Okay, not anyway, it's been a long process. The leg of a horse, the leg of a buffalo, the leg of a cow are still very awkward for me to paint. And you'll see that. But what have I done? I've thought like an artist. What does that mean? Repeat, 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 repeat. Over and over and over and over. The thing that made our buffalo drive funny was that we drove on the speedway. Pete at Fox News and, and Will both said, I don't understand how you were able. I mean, I mean. You know who I am. I'm the voice. I'm on TV show and Fox. I can't get on NASCAR. How how could I drive my car on NASCAR? You can't. Maybe unless you had a buffalo on top of it. And so it's that fun thing that you just makes the story work. And so they were all going like, you got this. On? I show them the video and they're going like, what? And you see them run out there at the end and they're doing selfies with it. And so I shot that. That was not staged. I just happened to be there with my camera. And they ran out there, and, and he goes, wolves his head, and gives up. And, I, you know, I'm saying, hey, children, don't climb on the buffalo. You know, these two guys in their suits. So they both, but when I showed them, but what happened was this. The repetition of driving around the racetrack said, where else could we drive that would be funny and eye-catching to people and really make part of this story outrageous and fun for us. So we're sitting at the National uh, Harbor, and, and the guy that's, they're all, sta there's a bunch of pictures there. We're at the height at the National Harbor. And uh, we got the thing parked out front. And I said, hey, we got to find a place to park this. And the general manager says, you can leave right there if you want to. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a buffalo in front of us. So people are coming by and they're, they're shooting the height. They're, he's going, I love it. And so I'm thinking, wow, 
It's so rare. And then, you know, if we took this thing out to Yosemite where I'm going this summer, people go, eh, it's a buffalo. But man, in Buffalo, it's big news. Okay. All right. So we are in New York City. All right. So I have a new paint tin. I want to show you that. Then I want to show you some paper. And I want to talk to you about uh, repetition. <coughs> I'm up to, this is 1600. I'll put it on it right now. This is number 1623. There it is right there. It's on 300 pound paper. Wow. Some scrap paper I picked up at Cheap Joe's that they just cut and leave it in a box for people to try. It's Kilimanjaro, uh, 300 pound cotton, 100% cotton. Man, it's awkward to paint on, but it is lovely when you want to do it. It takes a little longer to do that because of the amount of water and paint. So here's what I'm telling you. I painted one paper for for seven, eight years before I ever changed. And it's the paper I talk about all the time. What is it? You know what it is. It's Kilimanjaro 140 pound white cotton, uh, bright white, 140 pound weight. I love it. And in front of in front of this paint book, which has a 300 pound piece, there's all these little fly paper. And they're probably about a 60 pound, but they're waxed in such a way that they'll hold watercolor. They're kind of fun to paint on. They also cover some of your other work. So I do that, but they've made that in a smaller size and I've been talking about it for a while. And one of them has been neutral and the starching in this is different. Let's see, I think it's this one right here. There it is, can you see? Look at the difference here. In my light, I think it'll even show up. There's bright white and there's the more of a natural white. Most of mine I do on bright white. Why? Because I think it matches my style. Now, if you're landscaping and you want this and you're going to add gray colors with some uh, evening oranges and all, this would be great paper for you. And by the way, this is a tad smaller. It's a tad shorter. Fits in my new bag really well. And I have a new bag I'm taking out west. I have more purses and bags than my wife. And so, uh, we should be yelling at me here in a minute. Well, not yelling, but saying, hey, I'm leaving. She's got a... Uh, birthday party to go to this morning for some of uh, a lady that some of you know you've been sending her birthday wishes i think michelle's birthday is today so or this week her party is today in fact who was it is it, denise did you paint a receipt this morning did i see that with a birthday cake for michelle <laughs> great job i love it made me laugh she painted receipts forever. Here is the white. So there's a version of this that's in natural. There's a version in white, and it has a different code number. So don't be fooled when you go in to buy it, but take a look. Same paper. A uh, little bit of a difference here. Well, it's, no, it's probably just the angle of the light. Yeah, it is. There they are. They're the same paper. Just cut a little shorter. And I like that because, but this is a good one if I want to make a heading or I can chop it back to five. This is made for really a finished probably five by eight, five by seven. It's five and a half by eight and a half, five and a half by nine and a half on this one. So I'm still using this drawing paper. I want to just go through what I'm doing this summer with paper, what I'm traveling with. I've traveled with this for several years, a little drawing paper. It's a little uh, 90, it's what, 80 pound, 80 pound drawing paper. This is the paper that I'll just whip out a quick little B or something on if I'm, um, if, if I'm painting a dragonfly or something to give someone, a kid who's in a grocery store and checkout aisle or, you know, and he's fussing and kicking, I'll, I'll say, watch this, mom. And while she's trying to pay the guy and put all her carrots on the counter here, I'll just take out my little pen and my little Altoid box and my brush like this and I'll go, Hey, hang on a second. Is that a dragonfly, see? And so suddenly, boom, and he's watching. And, and she's going like, who are you? And I, should I even trust you? You know, are you some weird man who steals children? And I'm going like, nope, I'm just a guy who thinks like an artist. And so I'll start doing this and doing this. And then I'll grab a little water. And, and this paper is great for that because it doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to be grand. It doesn't really have to be anything. It just has to capture the attention and push someone towards creativity. And that's what you're supposed to do if you're enjoying your art and you want to share it with people. You push them gently, like a swing. You don't shove them over the, the falls, you know. 
Um, the thing that kept me from doing art for so long was that I didn't know artists who fumbled around and stumbled. All I saw was their beautiful stuff in the gallery, and I, and I would go, I can't do that. I'm never going to do that. And it just stopped me. It wasn't until Carol got me painting supplies that were really nice painting supplies that I'm still using today. And same style. Hey, babe. And so, all right, so how long did it take me to do that even while I'm telling you a story? And so for me to do this, Uh, I can sign it and I can rip it out of the book like this. It's this little drawing paper, $2.50 or less. And I'll go here and, and he takes it home and then he can go, Hey, I could draw that later. And so he and his mom will sit down together and they'll go, look, there's just two little egg shaped eyes. There's a diamond here. There's a couple of details. And then, you know, you got all these feet out here. How many feet? I don't know. There's six, but you don't call those legs really. You do, but you don't, you know, the way I paint legs. So, so you get the idea. So that's what you're supposed to do with that paper. So in keeping with that, the only thing that's bothered me about this paper is that my ink, my paint didn't pop as much because they don't make this drawing paper in bright white. Guess what? Soho, who some of you have been using the Soho uh, Urban Sketching Paper. Now they've come out with a drawing paper, which is 12 pounds heavier than this one, 92 pound. And guess what? It is bright white. Oh my gosh. Does it paint brilliantly? And so uh, the concept of this now is that when I'm in those places and, and people want to see a piece of art, I can sketch. And I'm using a number three preppy pen here. They can uh, sketch just like this. Da, da, da. Not a lot of detail here, but you get the idea of where I'm headed. More legs would come down. And then, I, of course, I'd put my, if it was not a kid, I wouldn't want to give a kid a martini glass, but uh, I think you see where I'm headed with that. Okay, so then, then I'll just grab another one of these little brushes here because I carry these in my pocket all the time. And I'll go in, and then here's what I would do. i just grab this now and wet this just a little bit and just let some water run all over it and let that pen, by the way, this pen on drawing paper drives a whole lot faster than it does on watercolor paper. Now, how do I know that? Because I mess up a lot of paper. But I've also learned now to paint on more papers than I ever had. Why? I still will choose the paper that I want the best, that I love the most, and that I'm excited about. But in the same time, I will choose a paper that... Uh, I'll choose I'll choose a paper that, that I have somewhere, the back of menus. You never know what that's going to be. Is it 24 pound or is it on a hard piece of paper or is it a flyer that somebody leaves on your table or on your windshield at a place? You know, and so wh whatever you do, you just sort of paint on what you have. And that makes this thing very, very fun to do. And so uh, I'm not sure how I got the green in that brush. That must have been from yesterday. But I'm going to throw a little orange on here just like this. You can see I'm taking so much time with this. And then what happens here is I'm going to come in here and grab a little bit of blue because shrimp have a little vein in there like that. And then I'm to, I am going to grab a little more of that green because I just wanted some of it in there. Maybe that's what I touched it earlier and just wasn't paying attention. And so uh, come back in a little bit of red because, you know, the shrimp has uh, it's probably been toasted just a little bit. Some of the red that's coming out of here. So there, anyway, my, you see my point. And then I always keep a little mint, a couple of little things. This is actual mint julep color right there. So there it is right there. And so I keep that in there. Maybe there's a little splash of the martini coming out of the glass. And then let's go in here with just a little red and touch that right there. Uh, I could touch a little blue on the glass. And so uh, this is, look at, I wish I hadn't thrown the other one away now. You see the difference. But look how the color pops on this. And so what keeps that from being a finished watercolor? Nothing except a signature. done and then go back in and just put a little bit of enhance in it with this maybe add some extra feet it's hard not to finish one isn't it hard to just put it down and walk away sometimes that's what you have to do right now okay hey that works okay
And if that's too much black for you, you can come in here and just grab it. Grab the blue. All right. So, uh, so I'm going to show it to you one more time. If you're interested in just carrying something really quick in a small bag, in your grocery bag. By the way, I don't go to the grocery store without these three items right here. Either one of these fountain pens. No, I just don't. Why? Because that's where I paint for little kids standing in line. That's where I paint while I'm waiting on the deli guy to cut my tavern ham, which sounds really good right now, um, with a fried egg with a Julia Child omelet on it. All right, so so you see, so this is, I wanted to show you this. It's orange, not to be confused with the black one they make like this, that sketchy paper. It's a little rougher, heavier. I like it too. This is a little slicker for you hot press people. You're going to love this just for this little giveaway. Look, it, it's going to frame really nice. It's, it's pretty rugged paper. See that? That's, that's a pretty good tear. All right, throw that away. Go down there. Okay. <laughs> um, so, any questions, any thoughts, any answers? Uh, let's see. Did you feel the energy in New York? I was putting down, um, what brand of water brush do you recommend? Mike Paramore says, brand. Mike, uh, I have always been a fan that says I probably don't need uh, an $80 to $150 uh, brush by my, for my style of art. I'm not... I'm not knocking sable brushes, but I love the pseudo sables because they're in, in a range that I can afford and I love them. But, but for 10 years, I have painted with, uh, with American Journey. And here's why. I, I believe they keep a point well and they just have this ability to last a long time. The ferrule's really tight the way it's double clamped. It's just a good brush and it is so affordable for any artist and, and, it you know if you're getting into fine detail and if you want to you never want to say don't spend it but if you're just starting you don't know what you're going to do but don't buy cheap 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 brushes okay let me give you an example i was doing a, a when i do a quick journal class sometimes i'll buy this uh this little four inch round from a company and and i'll tell you something about it already it's not trimmed well it's not, uh, it's not cut. It's already got, it's, this brush has been used one time and it already looks a little ragtag on the end. This is a kid's brush, a class brush, a brush to just get people to start learning to put colors together. It's a $2.20 brush and it paints like a $3 brush. This is probably a $9 brush that paints more like a $29 brush. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. And, and now I used to say, I don't know. And now I say, I know because I have done this so many years. Uh, and look how rough this brush looks. See how fat it looks on the end. But watch what happens when I wet this brush. Just get a little water in it that it hasn't seen in a while. And I roll it out. Look at this beautiful point that it comes to. And I can paint a small painting with this, with this big brush. This is a number 12 watercolor brush. Okay. Uh, so American journey brushes to me are fantastic. Here's why I, I still, I'll say part of it is I love the, I love the family of, uh, Joe Miller's family and they've just been great to me and, um, I love supporting them. So that's part of it. Then about two years ago, I just took a plunge and bought some pseudo sables, which are Miller's brushes. And here they are. So this brush even has more of a natural hair feel. This is no, no, no question about it. It says it right here on the thing. Interlocked nylon. Okay, that's huge. Interlocked nylon. This is not interlocked. The, whatever I had with that little yellow brush, I don't know what I did with it. Then I put it in the wrong thing. I'll know later when I yank it out. This little yellow brush here is not an interlocked brush. In fact, look at the, some of the fibers are already falling out here like this. Um, so keep some nail clippers and clip those out because you'll make a paint line. You'll go, whoa, what happened there? Did I hit it with my hand? Which I normally do. So so this is interlock nylon and it's made to be as soft as it can be for nylon. This brush, if you did this, this is the, the Yaya, the Crayola, the Carol Han, the <laughs> uh, uh, Carol Ann test. She goes like this. She goes, see, I can feel the difference right there. This if you, if you switch these around, I'd even know which one I was holding. I would know, oh my gosh, I know which one is the softest. And so part of that is, uh, part of this is that natural hair feel. So it's, it's called a Miller's Pseudo Sable. And even though it's synthetic, 
Uh, they have lasted so far. This is a two-year-old set that's just done fantastic. And I wound up buying a full set of those. Uh, no, I think I'm still missing one, but uh, I'm not sure. Here, let's see. Oh, that's that's American Journey. So here's what I've got. I've got a four, which you must have. I've got a six. Uh, somewhere there's an eight. Oh, there it is. There's a four, six, eight, 12, 14. Is there a 14 in here? 12. I don't have the 14, it looks like. Oh, no, there's a 14 and 16. And then I have what they call the Sable Mop. And there they are right there. So those are... So uh, is that a commercial for those guys? I hope so. But at the same time, I, I don't want to say that's the only art brush you should buy. Do, are, do other companies, Low Crowl, do, um, you know, do Windsor Newton make good brushes? Yes. And I have, I still have a couple little uh, Windsor Newton brushes that are here, different places. Here's a little brush that I use sometimes that's made by Cotman. Well, it is Windsor Newton. And it's a little rigger brush. And this is a great little brush, and it holds its body well. It is uh, it is nylon, too. It's a zero brush. This is for painting fine little feathers on my fishing fly sometimes. Like, so rigger brushes will do that. You know I'm a bamboo brush fan. Uh, for those of you who had not been seeing me paint for a while, there's just three of the ones I use. I keep these hanging up here on my wall. Take a look at those. Um, these, these are... These are five to nine dollar brushes right here and i get these from yasatoma but i get them through cheap joe's uh uh i think blick is starting to carry these i don't think uh, jerry's art rama carries yasatoma they carry windsor newton i will tell you this i like yasatoma over windsor newton there i just said it uh, I, I don't have to be loyal to any of them but i'm just telling you the hair is better it takes shape better it holds shape longer uh, this, of course, is the JB100. I have two of these. Some of you know the horrible story. Eleven members of this family were wiped out during COVID who made this brush for probably over 60 years. And so they're looking for um, new people to do it. And they think they found it. This is the 900 over here, this big brush. These are brushes that I keep hanging up. This is how you should store. Can you see it from my picture there? This is how you should store your best Bamboo brushes, it keeps the weight and the gravity holding the hairs down like this. Sometimes we do our brushes a disservice by mounting them up like this. But the cool thing about this brush, take a look. Here, here, here it is right here. Can you see this? This is probably goat hair. Thin, thin goat hair. Skinny goats, that's where you get thin goat hair. Wet it. And man, nothing paints better than a loose... Um, bamboo brush when you're holding that thing back and you're just doing the style of art that I love to do and so it's kind of fun to do that All right okay so what a great question thank you um someday I want to take the walk down the bunny trail of bad art I'm thinking some interesting gems down on that trail <laughs> Ooh, 300 pound Chris says yes 300 pound is great stuff tea party I stopped by cheap Joe's in Charlotte picked up some Kilimanjaro paper Mentioned you by name. They knew you well, and I got a discount on the paper. Seriously. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, you should have told me. If you take a class with me, sometimes you can do that. So good for them. Um, yes, I figured a receipt was a perfect way to say happy birthday to the receipt queen herself. Love it, love it, love it. Um, and Chris, I think you will like this Soho paper just for drawing paper and quick little like you could do a whole series of little birds on this, Chris. You'd be it's it's a little thinner than your 140. Um, I assume you're probably using Fabriano hot press. If you are, it's a good paper. In fact, if I were ever going to use Fabriano, it would not be Fabriano cold press. It would be Fabriano hot press. And I have a bunch of that somewhere here. I had a bunch of it left over because I teach. I use that in my workshops for. Um, Travel journals. Here's why. Oh, here's a piece of it right in front of me right here. Now, this is slick as glass, but it's also 140 pounds. So you're probably using Fabriano Studio Paper. I would recommend that, uh, Chris, to you. Um, Mike, I hope that answered you on some brushes. Are there lots of companies out there, and there are lots of great brushes out there? Yes, sir, there are. But I'm telling you, it's the same time for the money. And for the longevity, I've been a dear fan of American Journey and now the Pseudo Sable. So, 
Uh, and I know you're painting a lot of bees, man. And uh, Okay, so give you an idea of how, once again, this, this carries a lot of... Uh, Here's a piece of hot press, and I don't use it much, but I've been using it on this buffalo, and here's why. Um, this buffalo that I'm working on um, is uh, I, that I have to do in 90 seconds. Don't think I just started out cold turkey. Why do I think like an artist? Because if I do, I'll, I'll learn something about this. It's not just about drawing sometimes. <laughs> it's about understanding the water the paper, the substrate that you're laying it down on. It really is trying to figure out uh, what I have to do to make this work and stay in my style. Because my style isn't really going to change unless I push it way to the outside. Uh, my bees are going to look like my bees. You know, they're just going to look like my bees. Well, here's one that doesn't look like anybody's bee. I don't know if anybody's ever painted this before. Uh, and I did it yesterday on Carol's mention. She said, you know, uh, you... People like being patriotic. I said, what'd you say? She said, people like being patriotic. And I said, yeah, I like to be patriotic. She said, be patriotic. So she says, I'll be back in about an hour. I got a, a couple errands to run. And so I'm still moping around the house, taking care of my teeth. So I painted this little bee. Didn't know how it turned out, but I kind of like it, huh? So I did these three. I did, no, not this one. I did this one this morning. I did, I did three or four like this. 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So that's how many I did, but there's, there's to be patriotic. So I said I wasn't going to do any more patriotic stuff because <laughs> I wanted to get them shipped out to you before the 4th, which is, you know, you shouldn't do a Christmas card on Christmas Day and say Merry Christmas because people are going like, yeah, I'm taking my tree down. So I was trying to rush this year, but I thought, I've never seen a red, white, and blue bee. I'm sure there's some out there. I didn't Google it. I didn't want to Google it. I didn't want anybody else's idea to invade mine. So sometimes that seems silly. Other times it just seems downright, do it on your own, and then you don't feel like you're copying something all the time. And that bothers me. So what did I do for Buffalo? Let's go into the Buffalo story here a little bit. I said, first thing I got to do is I've got to find a Buffalo that I like. I'd written the poem. Here it is right here. It's just a short little poem. That's it. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what the whole poem is yet. I may have read it one time before, but I'll just tell you it starts like this. I was here. Before John Muir, I was born on native soil. Whoa. And I just started writing it, uh, and I wrote this in 2018. And um, I've decided now I want to do a painting with it. And I thought, wait, I'm going to Jackson Hole. And I would love to see the mountains of Jackson Hole behind this buffalo. Uh, uh, and so anyway, so I started finding buffalo. So I went, I did, I went online. And I started looking at some buffaloes, and I looked at uh, how detailed they were, and I thought, no, I don't want to do that, and I don't want all that, and I don't want that. And so I wound up with this little sketch right here, like this one. I think this is the first one right there. And I wound up with this little sketch, and there he is. And I thought, I like him, but I don't like his, his, this is This is too long horn, not enough curving the horns. But I did it anyway. And then I thought, what would it look like if I turned him a little more? more color so I did that one and then as I'm then I thought no I want a little more face and a little more color so I put his rump a little perspective going back that way so I did that one and then I don't remember the rest of them in order because I found one that I really liked and then I had painted some Tetons um, where are they by the way where is that where is that uh, got one somewhere I can't have one but anyway oh I bet this is it right here here's here's another paper look so I painted these one day and that was a close-up of the Tetons you see that little shot right there I just did that because I'm thinking before I go there I should learn how to paint the Tetons and so then I painted this this is more of a shot of the Tetons look a little roll out here a lot of shading this is just pen and ink this was three different types of ink and so I did that little thing and then I thought what if I painted that with a buffalo in front. So I painted, I don't think I painted it in here. There's a bicycle, there's a fly. Yeah, I don't think it's here. This, by the way, is Soho heavyweight drawing paper, 135 pound. And this, some of you would love this too. And Chris, you'd probably love this very much as well. Uh, so drawing, uh, well, is, is this drawing paper? 
this is heavyweight drawing paper. And I think they may, they might make that little, they may make this in a heavyweight drawing paper. And I haven't tried that yet. I bought this so it would feel more like a journal page when I was doing the workshop on journaling. So, all right. So, but I want to show you some of this of how it's progressed. So I thought, could I do something like this? There's one with the mountains in the background. Could I do, there's the bee, you don't see him again. So there's another one still looking that way. Here's one that I did in about two minutes, just the buffalo. There he is right there. There's a, a sample. There's a sample. There's a sample. There's a sample. Oh my gosh. See, I'm narrowing where I want to go and I'm not asking anybody for help. I'm not, uh, I'm just thinking, what, look at look at the legs. Pretty crude. There's just too long a back. Um, there's one. There's one. Look at this one. This one was just all over the place. Look. But I liked that, except that his head looked like a goat head. It wasn't big enough. I liked that one. I thought this one was pretty cool. I did one in pencil on a natural. I did this, this. <laughs> um, this, look at this one, very geometric in shape. I did this just scratching the pen as I was. we were driving. And then I did this one. And so... These are not in order, but you can see there's some great ones there. There's some bad ones there. There's some there. The, the point is, um, I wanted you to see how that repetition is what this is always about and different types of paper. And so I'll do, I think there's 28 or 29 of them so far. And so that's sort of how it started for me. And I have felt good about that process. Um, where are those mountains? And I'll show you how fast those can happen just, just like this. And I don't need the whole mountain scene. I just need a little bit of, of something up there that makes this work. And watch this. I'm going to take, if I, if I did it this way, I could kind of come in like so. And then I'd go up here and down. And there's another one. And then up the peak here and down and off to the side. And then one more. And then uh, there's another place that comes down here like this. Okay, so there's a little bit of the Grand Tetons, just, just in the way that I sort of saw them come together right there. And then I'll put some road coming in here. And then for me, I started the Buffalo. Uh, and so that took, what, eight, 10 seconds. Well, I'm talking, so it's taking a little more. And then I started with, believe it or not, I started with this horn. Yep. <laughs> and I went, well, because that's going to relatively, it's like starting with the beak of a rooster. And that's just my brain set. I didn't want to start with this back and then got its head right. I'm going like, no, if I get this wrong, I'm going to get it wrong right now. So then I want to do this big old head and, and I'm going to come around like this and just do some in here. This comes out a little farther. And then he does have kind of a pear shaped head. It comes down like that. That's not too bad. So I'm not looking at, and right now I'm not looking at any buffalo. I'm not looking at anything. I'm just thinking, what do I remember about that buffalo? And he's got this big old round hump that comes down. And then that's about the right relationship. What does it look like to you? Look. You see how that mirrors that? That's what made me think. That's the hump right there. Okay. And so then I want to come in here and this is where the big fur comes down the buffalo. And then I saw that the fur just runs on down into his leg. And then there's a hoof there. And then there's a little bit of this comes in here. And then he's got another leg that just comes, comes in there like that. See those two run together. So that's why I said he's just a three-legged buffalo. And then he's got a little cut out right here. And this comes down. And, and then it kicks back and it comes down like this. There's a little hawk there. And uh, this leg is behind that one. And a little heavier in here. Now watch this. So I'm into this for 45 seconds, but I'm talking. But remember, I got to be talking when I'm doing this too. I was here before John Muir. I was traveling as, you know, I was born. So now I'm just going to take this and look what's happening. It's dried so fast. That pen has dried so fast that I'm not getting much of a bleed at all. So that's why I went, so I'm going like, okay, so I can't do this on that style of paper. Nope. That's not what I wanted. Okay. So down the buddy trail, boom, and I'll go to a different kind of paper. Now watch when I put this on, uh, watch when I put this on this watercolor paper. Here, let's just put it on. Yeah, let's put it on this one right here. Boy, I guess I'm going to have to go to Cheap Joe's, huh? All right. Here we go. 
How are we doing with time? Almost done. Man, I've talked to you guys a year off, and I haven't even uh, paid much today. But uh, question, question, question. I saw that. What was it? So sorry. Let me go back. Uh, Rosemary Company brushes are great, by the way. I know them. I met with them, too, one time. So, uh, have you ever used watercolor pencils on the show? Uh, Ms. Carla, I have uh, some. Um, and honestly, I, I still like them for water, for little flies, fishing flies and things like that. But uh, sometimes they get in my way. Um, because they don't do, they don't run. And if I get too heavy handed with a pencil... Uh, they sort of they sort of mess me up. So here we go. I'm gonna do this again. Watch this. I'm gonna come in like this, and now I'm not looking. So I've just got to sort of take this um, into what I think the mountains look like. So I'm not looking at anything that I've drawn before. So I want a little darkness there to come in. All right. Now I'm on I'm on 140 watercolor paper. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go around here. And I'm gonna take a little cut out. I'm gonna do this horn like this, and I'm gonna do a little hair follicles sticking out denise and chris and uh some of you people can draw this um buffalo in a heartbeat i don't think i left enough room down at the bottom of the paper but i'll get this over and done and show you what's going to happen and this is why i'm repeating it over and over and over okay so that's why i'm doing it just watch how what i'm after here this is what i'm after maybe this will work All right, so here we go, a little of this in here, a little of this in here, and now let me pick this up here, and I'm going to show you a trick. You know, you watch this now. If I come in here, now you see, oh my gosh, and you're like, are you serious? Yeah, you see, this is watercolor paper, so the rough undulations hold that ink up and don't let it sink into the, the paper. Why? Because there's a ton of starch on this. This is natural, and so there's not as much starch as there is on other things. So, so there we go. Now I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to touch some of this. Uh, I'm going to come in here, come back with this, come into here. Um, now watch this. I want a tree line out here. So I'm going to drop some water across here just like this. And I'm going to come in with a number three uh, watercolor pen. And I'm just going to drop some water across there or some tree lines across there like that. Look at that. Okay, I think you understand what how fast this has got to be. And it's just got to look like it's happening. And there's the little painting. Uh, I can mess with it all day long, but watch what's happening with the tree line. You see how it's turning into trees out in front? Um, and so this is what I've been working on. So while I've been down with a dental uh, deal, I've been working on a three and a half legged buffalo. There you go. All right. Hey, it's after 10 o'clock and I got house guests coming. So that means uh, Carol's out at a birthday party. So I'm going to have to go uh, not really clean house because she keeps it uh, pretty amazing, actually. But we live in it, too. I'm thankful for you guys. Um, if you want to learn to paint something new, for heaven's sakes, practice it, practice it, practice it. And then do that again and do that again. I think now this is what? 30 or 31 times I've painted a buffalo. 35, I think, if you count the three that I tried to do in the car when I was riding with the buffalo, and they looked pretty dead gum bad. The point is, <clears throat> I'm focused on it, not to go to painting buffaloes everywhere. I don't need uh, uh, rulos, <laughs> buffaloes. I don't. I, I just need this one for a poem that I want to do. And then I'll probably put this poem into my poem book, not, not oceans, because I can't get into the ponds. But uh, I think you'll see that this is now fading a little bit and running down. It's working really cool. And so that's kind of where this is all headed. I'm loving it much. And I'd probably touch this with just my little bamboo. By the way, if you're going to work with bamboo brushes, just remember this. Man, if there's anything in the world that carries a lot of water, it's these guys, okay? They just flat out carry some water. But you love what happens when you come back and put that fountain pen in that water and it bleeds like that. Look at what's happened to this. Don't you love that? A little less water up here, just a tad right in there. Look at that. Man, no wonder I could do this all day long. I love it so much. 
that turns out to be a pretty good little painting, even if I did do it myself. These are little splotted, just a shadow right here. And this. I could mess with this for another 20 minutes, but I don't have time. Blessings to you all. Thanks for being a part of this, my world. I really do appreciate the community, and uh, I'm glad that some of you are learning some things. And I'm also glad that you're willing to try things and see me fail here because it's just over and over and over. Um, I am not uh, the best artist you'll ever bump into. In fact, I still don't call myself an artist. People say, you're an artist. I go, I think like one. But in that process, I probably have crossed the line for some people who never even think about it. Um, I had this awakening, and I'll just tell you what it is. This is a spiritual awakening, and it's this. I was, I've was i been reading the same passage of Scripture. Today is 113 days. It's not even a passage. It, yeah, it is a passage. It's a whole chapter. It's Romans 8. I've been reading Romans 8 for 113 days straight. I'm not trying to get a pat on the back. I'm not trying to ask for, oh, good, good for you. I'm not trying to work anything out and worrying about, no. I'm just reading it because what it says blows me away every day and I find something in there. And I thought, I'm not doing that much at my art. So I've been doodling again and I still doodle every day, but I've been adding an extra 20 minutes in there somewhere just to find a place to doodle. Do I get up earlier? Do I stay up later? Do I find more time at lunch? Do I miss skip lunch and just paint during lunch? That doesn't hurt me either. I'm a big guy, remember? And so that has helped my sketching. And so I couldn't have done this Buffalo thing without it. Now, my goal is this, and you'll see it in my journal if it works, is to have this, I'm going to record this poem, or I'm going to speak it live, memorization, and I'm going to sketch what I see in my mind. And I probably won't see a buffalo there when I see those mountains, but I'm going to put the two together. So I needed to know how to draw that buffalo. And he's going to get better and better and better. His legs will be cleaned up. It'll work a little better. This leg could have come down. I'll, you know, There's always ways you can go back in. But the point is, I want that to happen. And I'm going to shoot it with a video just for fun. Uh, legacy for grandkids. And then I'll pass it on to my friends uh, that I went to New York with. And my friend. All right. Blessings to you all. Thank you for being a part. Appreciate all your thoughts and prayers. Uh, as I've been going through a lot of dental pain. Uh, that'll continue for a while. Uh, great words that you don't want to hear like uh, implants and uh, uh, bone grafts. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been all that and above. <laughs> So I don't wish it on you at all. So it's not about brushing your teeth. It's about avoiding injury sometimes, which just happens. So, all right. Blessings to you all. Thanks for being here. I'll go through some of these a little later today if I have some time. I hope we can see a sketch out west. Um, uh, all right. I'll do some videos for sure. What kind of, uh, you may have already told us, but sometimes what kind of ink do you use in your fountain pens? Uh, Teresa, here's my answer on that. Uh, running just a little longer this morning. I use the ink that's recommended for that pen, okay? Um, I, I um, yeah. If you've got a Lamy fountain pen, use Lamy ink because I promise you, they researched it in and out. Now, there may be, there's blue, there's black, and I don't know if there's other colors of Lamy. There may be. If it's preppy, um, I go preppy. It's carbon ink. Um, did I say that right? Is it carbon? Is carbon the right word I'm looking for? It is carbon ink. And in fact, there's a little pack right there. Uh, this pen right here is literally a $5, $6 pen. I think it's gone up a dollar and a half since I started buying them. I have an 02, 03, 05 in those. I have more of those than you even want to know. Uh, I have uh, a Pilot fountain pen. I have two Lommies. Here, if you're just hanging out with me this morning, it's too hot to go outside. I'll show you what I have here. Um, I have two of these. I don't see the other one right now. This is Pilot. There's another Pilot here somewhere. There's a Metropolitan Pilot. Oh, I got more of those than I need. Whoops. Yeah, I got a little bit... Uh, What's the word? A little bit. Uh, there's another one of those. That's a Kakuno. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. There's another Kakuno. I'm so sorry. These four are pilots, these four are preppies, these five are preppies, these two are lommies. Um, whoops. Those six. <laughs> uh, this is a sailor. Uh, yeah, I'm not right with myself. 
I apologize for saying, um, whoops, there's another pilot and another preppy and another pilot. <laughs> All those are found bins. <laughs> All right, so, I, so um, I'm going to be going to um, a um, FP group, FPA group. Hello, I'm Michael, and I uh, am a pentaholic. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know there was that many until now. I've started laying them out in front of you, and I'm just a tiny bit embarrassed. Like heck I am. I think it's kind of fun, but I, I could be embarrassed. Oh, no, there's another one. <laughs> and this one, listen. This one's never been open. That's a three that still has a loose ink cartridge in it. See, it's not even popped in. So if you're going to have, uh, so for these pens, buy the carbon ink. For these pens, buy the Lamy ink. For these pens, buy the Pilot ink that fits these. Just go online and or go to the place you bought it. I, I recommend buying these at an art store, Cheap Joe's. Uh, Jet pens is great. I recommend buying these online. This is Pilot Metropolitan. This is a Yas uh, this is a Kakuno pen. So there's two of these. These are two different sizes. This is the extra fine point. Uh, fine point, extra fine point, fine point, fine point, medium point, uh, medium point, fine point, and then all these are two to five, two, three, four, five, two, there's no four, two, three, and five as the pin. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, okay, so that's a problem. 17 fountain pins. Um, <clears throat> wow. All right. All right, I'm out of here like a herd of turtles. <laughs> Makes me feel better, Teresa says. Teresa, if you have 18, I, I think you probably do. So you have more than me. I'm ashamed of you. All right. Hey, I'm out of here. You guys have been blessed today. Hey, please go paint something fun. And then think about painting something new this summer that you haven't painted. Maybe learn to paint a new flower. In my journal uh, workshop that I did a few weeks ago, uh, a week and a half ago, 10 days ago, 12, uh, several ladies just said, I want to paint flowers as I travel this summer. And I'm going like, man, what a great idea. Just do a whole page of flowers. And I took them some pads to draw on and said, don't get a, don't, don't put it all in the moleskin journal yet. Cause by the way, moleskin paper is harder to paint on. It's slicker and uh, your ink dries at a different rate and you've got to watch your pens and you've got to watch your water and you've got to probably give yourself an extra cup of tea while you're sitting around. And um, let that dry some because if you close it then you've got ah, children's art okay you might have flowers all right i'm out of here wow what a morning okay i gotta paint something today wait i think i just didn't stay safe on the fourth of july that's right um so Kane says, I love that FP Aholic. Might be a few of us that need to join you. <laughs> I'm Rue. Maybe I could just maybe I could shoot a video. I should just probably shoot a video. I'm Rue and I have a problem. <laughs> My problem is I think like an artist. God bless y'all. <laughs>